We on there? Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the planning board meeting here tonight and uh, September 16, 2021. Welcome uh, CAO Rob Philpott. And we have our engineer from Tech Services, Aaron McDonald and Linda Stevenson. And uh, we have uh, all councillors present. Uh, Councillor Drawn is unable to be with us right at this time, but he may stop in. At this time, uh, we'll have the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? Moved by Councillor Ramsey and seconded by Councillor McFeely. All in favor? Country nay carried. And at this point, we'll turn it over to Councillor McFeely, the chair of the planning board. Thank Lord you, Your Worship, sir. and uh, we will we will call the uh, September 16th meeting of planning board to order. Uh, the agenda is in front of us and uh, has been approved. Uh, so we will move right on with uh, the first point of business here, 725 Cardinal Street Zoning Bylaw Amendment. So we'll read through this, and I found when I read through this, just a couple spots are a little bit confusing, so we may need to get clarity on those afterwards there. So, uh, Supporting explanation, the purpose, the purpose of the zoning amendment is to allow a manufactured home park residential development in the proposed R5 zone. Manufactured home means a transportable, single, or multi-section dwelling ready for occupancy on the completion of setup in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Manufactured homes include modular homes, is a manufactured home built to Canadian Standards Association A277. Modular homes are typically designed to be placed on a permanent foundation. Mini homes is a manufactured home built to Canadian Standards Association Z240. Mini homes are typically designed and placed on a concrete block or concrete pylons. Mobile home is a manufactured home built to uh, CSA standards uh, Z240. Mobile homes are typically designed with a steel chassis to be placed on a concrete block or concrete pylons. Mobile homes are not to exceed 20 years of age at the time of building permit application. Manufactured home park means a site on which a number of manufactured home spaces are provided and which may include other direct, directly related uses. Background, an application was received from Travelers Rest Mobile Homeland for PID number 836296 to amend the city's zoning bylaw from agricultural A zone to a manufactured home park residential R5 zone. A public meeting was held on September 13, 2021, and Council gave first reading on the same date. And there's a map there showing the subject property. And as well, there's a, uh, a diagram showing the, uh, the proposed layout concept for Phase 1. Report under Section 5.7 of the Zoning Bylaw, when Planning Board reviews a Zoning Bylaw amendment, it has to consider the following general criteria as applicable. Under Section 8.4 the green of the Park and Green Space Plan, the criteria of B, C, E, G, and H must be considered. A, conformity with all requirements of this bylaw. Staff comment, if Council approves the zoning map amendment from A to R5, the applicant uh, will, be, will place manufactured homes, modular and mini homes, subject to the R5 development standards as noted below. The applicant will be subject to a major subdivision process. And the chart there shows what's the acceptable uh, lot area, depth, frontage, uh, front yard, side yards, rear yards, maximum height, and flankage yards uh, for the R5 zone for single wide and double wide uh, units. B, conformity with the official plan. Staff comment, the rezoning conforms to the official plan section 5.3. 3.2 mobile homes the proposed amendment does impact the parking green space plan 5.3.2 mobile homes a distinction is made between mobile homes and modular homes the latter being built in off built in off-site factories but in accordance with the current city building standards and of compatible appearance with conventional subdivision housing under these conditions, modular homes are synonymous with single-family, semi-detached, or duplex dwellings, as the 
case it may be. Mobile homes, including mini homes, are largely located in manufactured home parks in the city, although there are a few located in private residential lots in the former community of Wilma. There are six conforming manufactured home parks in the city, which are, are generally of a high quality, as well as two non-conforming parks. So um, the objectives in the official plan relating to mobile homes is to uh, limit the expansion of new manufactured home by home parks. And our policy statements uh, relating to that, uh, there's several of them. I think uh, the first two are really relative to this particular, uh, this particular case, so I'll read those into the record. One, restrict mobile home, mini homes to uh, manufacture home parks and allow the possibility of limited expansion as policy two below. Two, limit expansion of new zoning R5 to adjacent continuous uh, property to the conforming manufactured home park subject to council's rezoning process. As per section 7.2, future, future growth needs the city will experience residential growth, which will result in a necessity to expand parks and green spaces to accommodate the residential growth. The program expansion is set out in section 7.3.1, new parklands. A portion of the subject property is identified as potential expansion to a neighborhood park, south of the Rotary Park, identified as 685, uh, see table and future uh, and existing recreation green space, and that's on the uh, the next page there. You can see where uh, 685 uh, is circled in, in it's yellow but circled in red. So that's what that's referring to. Uh, the program includes potential for nine new or expanded parks. I won't get into all of those, just the one related to this is highlighted in yellow. Uh, 680, 685 Neighborhood Park, South of Rotary Park, a proposed new neighborhood park, 5.0A, uh, plus or uh, that's uh, five acres, plus um, uh, two hectares, hectares, would be accessed off the proposed east-west connector street joining McEwen Road and Water Street East. A new park would link directly to the Hall family lane. And again, the map is there showing, showing those. C, suitability of the site for the proposed development. Staff comment. This 38.5 acre site is suitable for manufactured home park residential land use. A public street municipal services are being proposed for this development and as the proposed lots will be owned individually. Uh, D, compatibility of the proposed development surrounding land uses, including both existing and projected uses. Staff comment, the subject property abuts four uses. The property to the west is agricultural. The property to the south is zone residential R1. The property to the north is parkland, Rotary Park, and the land to the east is residential R5 and R3. The surrounding future land uses are residential with the exception of the parkland use. The rezoning from agricultural to proposed R5 would be compatible with the surrounding properties. The subject property is intended to be further subdivided and will be subject to a major subdivision process upon development. Road connections, drainage design, and setbacks will be addressed during the subdivision process to ensure compliance with city standards. And again, there's a map showing the uh, proposed uh, subdivision there and its orientation with the proposed east-west connector, etc. Is there a point to just ask the question there, Mr. Chairman, or we'll wait till you're finished? Uh, Maybe we'll wait till you're finished. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah, that'd be great. Um, e, any comments from residents or other interested persons? Staff comment, a public meeting was held on September 13, 2021. The public meeting notice was advertised in the August 30th edition of The Guardian. 36 letters were mailed to 26 property owners. Trevor and Ken Most, Travelers Rest Mini Home Limited, provided an overview of the development and noted that the housing is needed in the community. No one from the public spoke at the meeting. An email was received from Heritage Holdings, Inc., K. Rogers, supporting the rezoning, and a letter via email was received from uh, Caprite owners of Wood Ridge Park. Both uh, correspondents are attached uh, to this report and I'll read those into the record. The concerns from Capri 
have been addressed throughout the report. Adequacy of the existing water, sewer, road, storm water, and electrical services, city parking, and park land for accommodating, accommodating the development and any projected infrastructure requirements. Staff comment, the city's water supply and sewer treatment system can handle the loading created by the change in use. Staff have not received the preliminary water and sewer servicing information from the developer. As a result, staff are not able to comment on how the developer is proposing to service the property. The city's sewer system in the area is shallow, only five feet at Cardinal Street, therefore possibly requiring a lift station in the southern portion of the property or a sewage line that connects to the Southern Street sewer stub outside of development extents. Streets are required to be designed and built to city standards. Storm drainage will be directed to the existing open ditch system along Confederation Trail. Single phase electrical service is available to be extended from Cardinal Street to service the proposed mobile home, mobile housing. Summerside Electric can provide overhead service to support the new development. Underground electrical service must be designed by the developer's electrical engineer and approved by Summerside Electric. There is ample existing parkland, Roadway Park, which is 53 acres, located adjacent to the subject property. Parkland dedication is not required until the uh, property is fully subdivided. G, impacts from the development on the pedestrian vehicle access and safety and on public safety generally. Staff comment, the existing street network will handle the additional traffic to Water Street East via Cardinal Street and Small Avenue. Street design will accommodate pedestrian traffic. H, compatibility of the development with environmental, scenic, and heritage resources. Staff comment, there are no compatibility issues regarding environment, scenic, or heritage resources. I, impact in city's finances and budgets, not applicable. Other matters as specified uh, in this uh, bylaw, no comments from staff there. K, other matters as considered relevant, staff comment, the protection of trees, vegetation on the boundary of Woodridge Mobile Home Park and the subject property is a matter of the uh, property owners. Staff review, city staff supports the application from uh, Traveler's Rest Mini Home Limited to rezone from agriculture to R5. As per section 5.10, subsection B3 of the zoning bylaw, the planning board shall make a recommendation to council on this application before it is approved or denied. The planning board recommendation, whether carried or defeated, will be brought forward to council for final decision. And before we move that uh, recommendation forward, I'll read into the record the letters received from, uh, um, first of all, from uh, uh, Capri Apartments. Uh, was sent to the uh, development officer to Linda, I assume, on the Monday, September 13th at 5.45 p.m. Uh, yeah, yeah. Carpright Apartments, Inc. Uh, is the owner of Woodridge Place Mobile Home Park, municipally known as 18 Camera Avenue, which is situated to the east of the subject property and share a boundary. We have received notification for the proposed zoning bylaw amendment for 725 Card Cardinal Street to amend the zoning bylaw for agricultural A zoning to manufactured home park residential R5 zone. Capri does not object to the rezoning of the adjacent lands in principle. However, as adjacent landowner, Capri has concerns regarding the tree protection, road connections, drainage, community design, and setbacks from the proposed development. One, tree protection. Currently, there is a row of trees that are situated between Woodridge Mobile Home Park and the subject property. Landscaping or grading plans have not been provided with the current application and therefore we are unable to confirm whether any trees located on the boundary will be impacted. We request that a tree inventory and protection plan be implemented as part of the development approval to ensure that the mature trees on the property boundary and within current property are maintained and protected during construction. Two, road connection. It is our understanding that the proposal for the subject land is for one public street with homes on either side. However, no site plan has been provided for review. 
Capri is of the opinion that no new roads from this proposed development should connect to the existing private road network in Woodridge Place. Drainage, as the subject uh, application shares a significant boundary condition with Woodridge uh, Place, we are concerned that drainage be considered between the properties. Appropriate grading plans and drainage to ensure that Woodridge lands are not impacted <coughs> from overland flow from any new development is important. We request that consideration during construction for drainage and siltation control on the boundary also be implemented through the detailed engineering design and approval. Uh, community design. Capri takes pride in the appearance of uh, Woodridge Place. Community uh, and ensures that our properties are maintained. We ask that the municipality apply design standards for the uh, infrastructure layout and maintenance of the proposed project so this does not uh, der derogate uh, from the quality of Woodridge Place community. Setbacks. Capri is unable to confirm that the proposed setbacks are sufficient from the existing home adjacent to the shared boundary as no site plan was provided. We request a site plan with adequate setbacks are provided. Capri is not opposed to the zoning bylaw amendment for 725 Cardinal Street, but requests that the above noted concerns be considered in the design approvals of the proposed development. Thank you kindly, Samantha Floman, Development Coordinator, Capri. 11 Church Street, Suite 401, Toronto, Ontario. And the other uh, oh, there, there it is right there. I got it. Yeah. Uh, the email to development officer on Sunday, September 5th, 2021 at 1045 a.m. Heritage Holding <coughs> Incorporated has no objection to the rezoning of the above mentioned parcel of land. This approval gives an affordable option for family housing regards K. Rogers Heritage Holding. So with that, uh, we have a recommendation that the uh, application received from Travelers Rest Mini Homes Limited, PID number 836296, to amend the city zoning bylaw from Agricultural A Zone to Manufactured Home Park Residential R5 Zone be recommended to be approved by council. And if I can get a move by the second, or moved by Councillor Ramsey. Second. This second the, is second the council? Sorry, this is second the being recommendation to the council. council. Yeah. Right, okay. Second yep. by Adams. Okay, Councillor Adams. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my question, I think you answered it as you went on there. Oh. Uh, public street, that's going to be city standards. The, the, and, the, and as, I, as I understand it, the street is. Yeah. And uh, the map was, I couldn't quite read the name of that street, but it, it connects to Cardinal. Cardinal. Yeah. Cardinal. And Thank you. Cardinal is a public street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Councillor Ramsey. Thank you. Um, Aaron, the letter that came from uh, <coughs> Capri, what were Capri? they called? I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. Capri. Capri. Okay, Capri. Um, and, and the concerns that they have. Um, have you guys had an opportunity to look at that and talk with uh, Ken and, you know, what it, like, how does that all flow, I guess? That's the, the question I have for you. I guess we can go through them individually, but uh, as stated, the tree, tree protection about trees between a boundary line is really going to be an issue between two property owners, not between us as the city. Okay, as we're, we're out of that, okay. Uh, the road construction is going to be a as they mentioned, the public street up the middle, it will connect out of the public street at the bottom of Cardinal. Uh, there is no connections planned at this time until we, the next part is, this is the rezoning, we're gonna have to see their detailed plan of how they plan to develop it. They just right. wanted to show, okay, we have a street going up the middle and housing on both sides. They're gonna have to do a major development and bring forward those plans for review. Right. Which will look at some of these items. Um, but we do intend for there to be connections from their subdivision to this subdivision because we also want it, their subdivision to get out to the east-west of the Connector. drawing of the drawing that Linda has on the screen. The very top, I guess it's, I want to be clear too, what's being proposed here is to rezone all of this property and as Councillor McFeely stated, what they've shown for our layout is just their phase one up to the point where this connector would go across the property. The Cap Reap property already has a 100 foot gap in their property that they did when they went beyond there. Yeah. To allow for a future connection so right. there has to be connections from their development 
this development over to the east-west. Right. There may not be ones farther down, but those other streets are below the boundary. But there will be connections that we're going to have to review whether they submit their detailed plans. But oh, oh, initially, <laughs> that extension there up to the connection with the uh, with the east-west connector is not part of the plan. Initially. Not part of their plan? Yeah. We told them that they have to allow for it, their consideration right. to know that there is going to be a road going to go through, so they have a rough idea that there's going to be a road through here, and you're going to have to connect. But he said that. Yeah, he night. said that the other night. Yeah. Ken yeah. said that. But I'm yeah. saying Cap Reed is oh. saying their comments oh. we're talking about is they don't want connections to their subdivision. <clears throat> there is has to be connections to allow those people a second way eventually out. Well, it's the same thing. They'd have to go through Ken's subdivision to get out. And they were yeah, and that's why that top they purple to line use, right. was advised when Cap Reed built their further extension that that piece was left to yeah. connect over to the budding properties to make another way out of that larger subdivision. So who has to have that conversation? We had that conversation when they built Cap Reed. It was actually with, Ken was yeah. the owner at that time. At that time. That's why there's a gap in there. If you drive up there, there's a hundred foot <coughs> gap between units yeah. yes. to allow for that. And th that drawing was on, it is in your official plan, it's in your east-west connector plan. Right, and I, I get that. But with that being um, a letter to us, I guess <coughs> what I'm asking is that conversation between Ken and Capri? Well, or we'll be dealing it, with are it we whenever. Involved in it? We'll be dealing with it whenever we. Uh, get in their actual plans beyond their rezoning that they're yeah. talking about now. Okay. Also in their plans, they are going to have to account for their own drainage within their development, which is their next comment. And we've commented that it's going to have to come down and connect onto the drainage system that's at the Confederation Trail now. Um, their last one about community design and appearance. We don't really have a standard that says you have to build your subdivision and have housing like this, a tree and all that. Well, those I standards don't exist as far as now in some of the <coughs> And I think Ken has proven himself with Woodridge. It's always been kept very, very nice. So I don't yeah. think that. I just me, say there's not standards that list right. maybe that there is in some other jurisdictions right. that says you have to do yes. this. There has to be. But the the right. difference with Woodridge is they rent their properties from Ken. These these guys are going to own the property. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. And the upkeep yeah. won't be up to Ken. Yeah. And the setbacks that they talk about, they're going to follow our standard setbacks. But the lots are very deep on this property. And uh, so they're concerned about really how close they're going to be to them. What they don't realize as well, in order for that top half for them to be developed, they didn't have a, uh, a water pressure and quality and, and uh, size. So on this piece that's already going to be proposed to be developed now, the water system to feed the top of that, the last developer came over off of one of the public streets, ran a new water main up this part of this proposal to feed their top part of their something. So there already is a buffer there that you can't build to because the water main is already through there. Right. But they don't realize that water main was put in so they could get better quality and allow them to further develop that top portion of the land. Right. So those things will be highlighted on the drawings when we get them from their designer, but they didn't want to, or don't have to spend all that money to do all this design until they know that the rezoning is gonna happen. Yes. If the rezoning is gonna happen, they did a concept to say, this is what we're thinking, this is what it's generally gonna look like, and if they get the rezoning, they'll do all those details, which then will be up for presentation in public. Okay. Okay, so I'm not sure who was next Thank here. You. Councilor McDougall or Councilor Adams. I have uh, a bunch of questions. Just a, just a quick question. Halfway down on the right-hand side, yep. uh, that shaded spot right there, what they, is that? They just gave us a typical lot to say, if you zoom in, there's what typically type of a, a, how big the unit would be to fit on what they just right, call okay, it a typical lot. Yeah. So how big is the lot? <coughs> we'll have to they're, they're not very big lots. No, I, I really, the density is, yeah. And are we rezoning just that property or the There's whole thing all the way up? The whole, that's what I was trying to be clear. If we go back to where the other sketch will show you, it's yeah. the property all the way up. The they way just up. want it to show, that's, that's what they own right now. Yeah. They want to show, they want to phase it to say, this is the first phase we're considering. Are we on? Yeah. Um, no, I, I just, uh, and the streets are going to be built to standards. Our, our standard will be curbing. Yes. And, right. So, not to be used, which that street would look like the last one built would be putters or up in Langell. Yeah. Would look like a 
Same width, curbs, pavement. Right. No ditches, right? Yeah. No. Correct. Because they're and only going to be 50 feet wide, so they don't not wide enough to fit ditching yeah. as well as the width. Yeah. The only concern I had with it, I have, uh, it's the same concern I had the other night. We're putting in an awful lot of pressure on the water street. The other part that I, I know that Ken builds a great, uh, that uh, Woodridge Place is, is, looks fine. When they're all individually owned, you don't have any control. And anyway, that's the only concern I have, but other than that. Question, we're just trying to look for you, the lot yeah. size. The lot size. There. So the, the lot sizes are shown on the chart here. So the lot sizes have to be a 12 meter minimum width and they have to be a minimum of 30 meters deep. These are actually a little bit deeper just because of the width of that property, less the road. So they're actually a little deeper than 30 meters. Is there any other, there's no other place in Thomas Island that has this concept, right? No, there's not, but there is in Charlottetown now. They just did one. Okay. And so the, you know, the tiny homes uh, concept, would this be the same type of thing that would, if somebody was to develop a tiny home? Well. Project. That frontage, as far as frontage, that 12 meters, I think our, if you build right now a semi-detached, a side-by-side -side attached, yeah. there are 26 meters, so you end up with like 13 meters each one. So this is 12, and they're an individual with no, like there's a, that's a budding somebody, this yeah. will be 12, and they'll have to have beat side yards, you know, as far as the size. Okay. All right, thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, Okay, so, um, just a few, several questions. How many letters were sent out? Twenty-six. Okay. And how many manufactured homes already exist in Woodridge? We'd have to get back with that information. I don't have the number okay. of homes that are currently in that park. Uh, but we know, that, like, not an exact number, we know there's hundreds up there in addition to um, the streets with homes off of um, Nightingale and so on, um, or down lower off Flamingo. Um, I have a few issues, and everybody knows I have issues with this, because it was in The Guardian. Not everybody gets The Guardian. It was not online. Um, like, residents if they don't get the guardian they don't have a subscription to get online and see the guardian they can't see it if it's not on our social media they have no way of knowing this and 26 letters is a very very small percentage of the people that are going to be affected by 76 extra homes roughly 150 extra cars coming in and out of one entrance every day um, I know there's talk of the east-west connector, but right now I can't worry about those 76 homes. What I have to worry about is the residents who are constantly asking me for another way out because if there's an emergency, there is trouble in there. Um, I have an issue with the plan. Um, you said it could change, but right now they have one straight street. We have um, issues on Arcona, Elm Street, St. Clair, Craig with throughways and speeding issues that we're constantly hearing about. So if this was to go through, I wish that they would make the street so it's not just a constant um, speedway from one end to the other. Um, okay, so we're not sure on the amount of manufactured homes. Um, and in addition, they had said my other question was on the connection. Um, uh, the people who own Woodridge have an issue with it connecting, um, and also the drainage. Last storm, we rainstorm, we had municipal services were called out to Water Street East due to the drainage, because what is up there now in Woodridge, Water Street East can't hold it, because it's 30 to 40 years old, however old that is, um, and I was informed by municipal services staff that what 
is on Water Street East to collect the water coming down from Woodridge isn't sufficient to hold all that water. So we're going to add to it. So that has to be looked at. And I ask that to be added to budget at budget time because that we have to get a fix for what's right there now. And if we're going to add 76, then we're going to really have a big problem. Um, yeah, I, I, I really do have an issue with this not being, I don't consider it was made public because only 26 letters isn't. Corey, we went through this whenever you did uh, Perry. And yes, it might be the people in that area, but the people that live around it are not the people that are going to have the troubles. The people that have the troubles are the people that are trying to get in and out every day. And like we said, one lady said she counted 55 cars, had to go buy her on Water Street East before she could get out. So we're going to have some big problems. And um, yeah, we really have to think on this one because it goes back to we have to take care of what we have before we keep adding on to it. We've talked about this with our other facilities that we have within the city, and this is the exact same thing. We're growing, but we have to make sure that we're ready to grow before we grow. If I could just comment on a, on a couple, oh, sorry, if you're on, you want me to just. He could go, we'll add the questions, go ahead. There we go. That uh, line across for that east western is through the Wood Ridge or whatever it's called there now. Is that a, do we have a right of way or is there a right of way or if that street was to go through, would it have to be expropriated? Would Woodridge wit to develop north right. of that? No, right where that uh, little yes. hand, right there. Right there. Where they at the time where they went to develop north of that purple line, yeah. we have a hundred foot wide strip across their property now. We do? As a right yeah. of way. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's, the right that's away there. Question so they were advised of that back in uh, ten years ago or eight or whatever it might have been, that that would be allowing a connection for that top half to get out of there. Okay, just a couple other comments in the former Wilmot it was the former Wilmot where Wood, when Woodridge started, and uh, I guess they got their permits for the water and for everything else, probably at that time from the province. So this is a situation where it's, it's sort of grandfathered in and we're trying to connect to it, I guess. And on my last one there, I think Mr. Most had mentioned the other night, we talked about the size of the lots. You know, it, he's trying to make arrangements for affordable housing, and uh, that's, uh, there's a big demand for that right now in the city. I know. There are buildings going up that are fifteen and eighteen hundred dollars a month, and they may be called affordable housing. I don't know, but this is an opportunity for that. And to follow up on, on Councillor Adams's point, we're growing, which is great. But I think as as part of this, we should make sure that this will certainly justify traffic lights coming out of those places uh, with that with that additional traffic. And I will say, like others had said, commend. Uh, Mr. Most for the, you know, he keeps good property there at Woodridge. And uh, I'm sure if this goes ahead, I'm just saying if, because council didn't vote on it yet, but uh, it will be, uh, he'll certainly uh, make sure that it's uh, first class. But that's something that will have to be looked at. I don't know whether it's built into the system, if it's approved that traffic lights, because there's two or three or four streets along there where it's a real problem. And uh, the same person contacted me, but. 55 cars before you can get out. So that could be part of the process as we move. Forward. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman, at this point. Thank you. Uh, Aaron, Director Aaron. Uh, we will try and get in the, this is planning board, we will try and get us the uh, number of units, uh, say north of the trail, and maybe just a little map so you know that's we're talking the area. Um, the through street, yeah, uh, where we have, I'm not sure the width of this lot, the, the lot itself or the, the entire property is not uh, wide enough to make two streets to allow them some maneuverability. Uh, we'll have to look at and bring that forward to them though when they bring forward their design if they can. Uh, the last one that was that wide was putters and it was wider than we purposely as far as we had owned the land. We tried making it deeper so that the lots aren't the same depth on both sides. There'd be somewhat of meandering, so it wouldn't just be. So we suggested that to the, that developer at that time. So we'll review that whenever they uh, 
bring forward their concepts, make sure that that's an issue for them. Uh, with staff have noted that they are to incorporate uh, drainage in their uh, in their review and final design, but we'll also check to see where this drainage is to come from, if it's to be going along the trail system, or if it's going further down to Water Street East. Uh, we, we'll have to verify where the drainage from this area. This area is all above the trail, and I know a lot of the areas come along the trail at certain points that they come down to Water Street East. Um, I'm not sure if there was any of those. I, I, that's what I, I So would, would you think, Aaron, there would be <coughs> any more water flow coming under there because it's developed into a trailer park than if it's vacant land? Uh, yeah, there does. A after a heavy rain lake? Or? There, there will be some because whatever our land is, not to get complicated, but yeah. in a uh, summer season, most of the water is going into, there's a different amount of water that just gets absorbed into the undeveloped land or if it happens to be a lawn. But whenever you have a hard surface like a roof or a pavement, the water doesn't absorb into the land but runs. So those are the areas that in the street that we're catching into a storm system that they're going to pipe then. So the hate to say the runoff coefficient changes from an undeveloped to develop. Water will not, when it's running across grass, will have a tendency to absorb in. When it's running across pavement, it's not gonna absorb in and will carry on. So there will be the same amount of rain is coming down and hitting there, but it'll travel farther quicker, but. So we need to understand then where that's gonna to flow to, I think, before. Which we, is what we've yeah. identified as an item, but one, one of the points was drainage that every developer has to, it's brought up by Cap Reed, as far as they mentioned uh, drainage, we said, yes, whatever they do the design, they're going to have to show us, just like every other subdivision, where the flow is in, in a grading plan, where it's going to to get into the drainage system. Now, Councilor if it's Snow. beyond, oh, as was me. mentioned, if it's beyond their development and it's connecting onto a system, we'll have to identify that and say whether it's right or not, that if it's something, an issue from the, from the trail down to Water Street and it's not their system, it'll have to be identified and brought forward as, a, as an issue for us as a city to deal with outside the development area. Yeah. I guess I'm just wondering in terms of allow, uh, allowing us to make an informed decision if we don't have that plan where the water's going and all that, that information. We can, put, we can put the grid lines on. The water's going to go where the natural topography is going now. Yeah. We're just asking them in the area they develop, collect it, put it in a storm system, and, and it to the end of their property to an existing drainage system so we know that answer to every developer is going to have to do the same whether it's a mobile home park or single family or an apartment complex or a commercial collect the water that's coming by grip by a natural flow of land out of your property collect it into a storm system that they're going to put in as part of this development and it exits at the lowest point of their land to a storm system okay councillor snow so would there be existing ditches etc along confederation trail there we have in the yes there is we have it's not controlled by us it's the province has that trail system we haven't gone through but we know some of the other properties drain there and uh like uh starlights is two properties over the land north of that comes as far as the trail it runs along a ditch all the way to the trail just before reed drive there's a large pond area that it comes down it comes out by the large overhead green sign or a lift station so if it, all that land north of the trail runs along the ditch system, it comes out there. If we look at the aerial photography, we could show you that it all comes to one point there, and there's a bit of a pond. I'm not sure the gentleman's name, but the reed firms, and it comes down back of those properties to out to the river. So I, I, I guess the reason why I'm asking that is the water issue that Councillor Adams is referencing, does it have to do with actually uh, Woodridge Trailer Park, or is it that the water's not draining from the development below. So if there's a ditch above or below it, wouldn't yep. it be going into that ditch and and flowing wherever it flows to the pond or wherever? Or if it's not doing that, then there's an issue we need to address with the province or whoever owns that ditch because in theory, um, everything above Confederation Trail should be going into that ditching system you would think or, well i would assume or am i wrong <laughs> i would assume though again we'd have to we're looking at it if you go to the left two more properties is is uh the hall property and it all swales down and you can tell in the springtime the water runs down through that meadow 
and consider that creek there as well. So at some point, the water's going both ways in that trail that we need to investigate and say, are they are they open or are they locked or? But know. that would be a provincial responsibility, right? Or just the crossings, yes. But we'd have to deal with them. And say, what do they yeah. have for? Uh, yeah. Okay. Councillor Ramsey. And I just had a quick question, and, and it's just about uh, council. Is Councillor Adams correct in saying that the infrastructure at the end of small is not is not able to look after the amount of water coming through there? Is that is that? Uh, that was brought forward to Municipal Works, and I did hear about it from these guys. I didn't hear from Municipal Works, but uh, again, driving by, we'll have to investigate where the system goes. It was there prior to the city of Algamaton, but there's one culvert that sticks out the end by just down from Betty's, and it's half half up with sods. I mean, whether it needs to be cleaned or maintained or, or videoed and inspected, you know, or... Or replaced. Right, you know? right. and, and I yeah. guess the other thing, uh, Aaron, is if it's the infrastructure there, then that's what we need to maybe something for budget that we need to. As stated, if it's below the trail, it's not really the responsibility of somebody that's developing above it. No, if no, they're no, just no, dumping I, into it. I'm talking about us. Yeah, I agree. That's what I'm just trying to. I'm trying to agree yeah. with you, saying that if it's below the trail, that's not right. within the development. The developer is going to be doing what's within the development and right. exiting to their property. That. To an existing so storage. what you're saying is his, like Ken's um, development, if he does the infrastructure properly, that shouldn't affect what's going to happen down on the other end. Pro provided, provided that the system below is working properly and sized right. properly. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's, and that's yeah. where municipal services staff, when they looked at it, CAO Rob, um, remember then you said you would put it on a budget, make sure it was on a budget time to be looked at because it needs needed to be addressed. And, and if not then we should be addressing it as opposed to correct yeah saying no to this because that's our issue right so yeah we, we, yeah 100 but yeah. we can't keep saying yes to things with without without addressing addressing issues yeah. Yeah. yeah uh your worship yeah just a final point and there's good points being made here and i'm following up with councillor adams and if you go back a few years bruce can probably remember this maybe norma i'm not sure but when the battle was on to try to get the tax center here on the pope road and uh, we got the tax center, and we had verbal commitment from Ottawa that Pope Road would be done over. Pope Road would have four, four lanes, two and two. Anyway, we got the tax center, and then after it was up, we went back to talk about when they're going to do the Pope Road over. What are you talking about? We just did it verbally. We did, they said, you got nothing in writing here that says that we have to do federal government, we're going to prepare the road for it. Having said that, we ended up putting the traffic you know, circling up there now, so this is so important with 70 new homes, which is great if it's approved, to have the infrastructure in place at the time. Mm -hmm. And whether it's for the water drainage and for the, the traffic lights and those kinds of things. So with growth, you gotta have the infrastructure as part of it for the growth. So I just wanted to mention that, that you know, it, that may be part of the development agreement, I'm not sure, but uh, there is a problem with, uh, with uh, people trying to get out onto those, on the Water Street East probably on both sides, but it's gonna mean traffic lights. And, uh, and and that's fine, that will look after the traffic. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Your Worship. Councillor Snow. Uh, Council McDougall mentioned this earlier, um, and, and you guys said there's one similar happening right now in Charlottetown. Any other like jurisdictions around Maritimes that we can look at or think of that have a similar way not, of doing it? Not that we know. The only one we're aware of is the Hambly's development in Charlottetown. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, I don't see any further lights and uh, I think I kind of share some of the concerns around the density there, but uh, if, it, if, it meets the, if it meets the requirements of the, the bylaw and the subdivision um, and, you know, the points around affordable housing, I think are are uh, important points, uh, you know, the, trying to find a place for somebody to live in Summerside here the last couple of weeks, and there's just <laughs> nothing out there under under uh, fifteen hundred bucks a month or something like that, and uh, it's a real challenge for a single, uh, you know, a single girl trying to make trying to make a, a go of it. So, um, I think the concern around water flow is legitimate. I really think we're going to have more frequent and more extreme situations and um, 
and uh, we need to be preparing ourselves for that. So I think it's I good. think so too. And as as tech services told us before, Brian, um, um, our infrastructure some of it's over 100 years yeah. old. You know, yeah. so we exactly. need to, yeah. exactly. Councillor Campbell. Uh, just to comment on it, uh, as a council, we should realize that the wards are, that are on the outskirts takes a heck of a lot more budget money to develop than just fix a few pipes here and there. But then we have to make streets and runoffs and things like that. Yeah. Keep that in mind that the budget's on. Setting yourself up as a boy. <laughs> Okay, no further questions. Are we, are we, oh, Councillor Snow. Because it was, sorry, it was referenced earlier that it, they're actually, we're rezoning more than what they plan on currently developing. Um, can we approve it up to what they're wanting to develop as opposed to, or, or would it make more sense to rezone it all? It, like, they might come back in 10 years' time and want to rezone the, part they're not developing now into something else so would it make more sense to do the portion they're wanting and see how it works and go from there or would it uh, and you never know by the time if this up this to rezone they may get uptake that drives the phase, phase or two. it's shifted right now from agriculture to residential they may have something that says like the other option we have is these narrow lots that we have we evoked it was this r3r which is very similar like they're Maybe they want to shift the top half then to R three R instead of mini hole. They don't like a modular hole. You know, it could be by shifting it from Barry Colson, they already have it to residential. And whether it was easier then to go from it'd be another four week process to notification and to do the top part. Right. This is what the request is. They just chose to show us because some of the question would be, Are you gonna do it all? Are you gonna phase it? They chose to submit their first phase now to show there's our first concept, where we'd like to go, at least get up to the top where that connection would be and, and uh, it makes more sense to do it all. It gives them security to know that what if the next council said, no, I don't want it to go, that they got this agricultural land in the top half that they, you know. Thanks. Okay. Platt. The, well, it's being firm because uh, off of uh, not Cardinal, one of the next ones up, we were up there a couple of years ago. A guy was putting a house in behind one of his units, and it was uh, there waiting for the crop to come out of the field. He's owned this for quite some time. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's his land. Okay, we have the recommendation there uh, that was moved and seconded, moved by Councillor Ramsey, seconded by Councillor Adams, that the application received from Travelers Rest. Mini Homes Limited for PID number 836296 to amend the city zoning bylaw from Agriculture A zone to a manufacturer home park residence or R5 zone be recommended to be approved by council. Uh, planning we board. We vote, sorry, recommended to be approved, approved by to vote, council. To vote again, sorry. So we'll go to council on the 20th for final uh, debate and approval. So planning board, uh, all those in favor say aye. Contrary, motion carried. Okay, the next thing on the agenda, we have uh, well, 715 Water Street East, restricted use. Uh, that's been deferred pending further staff review and I understand that uh, the people who were here the other night have all been informed of that or were contacted and informed of that. So uh, uh, have they all been contacted? Have they, have, was everybody that was here the other night? Everybody that was attended the meeting was was informed that the meet, the matter was being deferred. Okay. Yeah, and uh, that deferral was really around allowing staff more time to provide us with the information we need to, uh, to give the application the due consideration that it requires. So, and this was another one that wasn't, it was in the Guardian, correct? I believe uh, yes. so this is another one that wasn't yeah. on our social media. So I really think that not everybody gets the guardian, not everybody can see all the guardian online. So we really need, I think we need any meetings. We need to make sure we that need to make sure on our, our social media. I agree. Okay, we'll move on to 268 all weather highway restricted use application. And the 
support, supporting explanation. Purpose, the purpose of the restricted use is to allow a small retail store in the proposed farm gate outlet in the agricultural A zone. Highcroft Farms Inc. intends to sell products which are not grown on their farm in addition to products they harvest. Background, an application was received from Highcroft Farms Inc. for 268 All-Weather Highway, PID number 1081520, to allow a small retail store as restricted use. The small retail store is intended to occupy a portion of the proposed farm gate outlet building to be built on the subject property. The existing farm gate building is to be re, uh, relocated. Farm gate outlet means uh, land or a building where produce is harvested and sold by the grower and is an accessory use to a general or intensive agricultural use. Excluding sale of farm products not grown on the premises or any non-farm products or a plant nursery. Retail store means a building in which merchandise is offered for sale to the consumer including small retail store with 230 uh, square meters. That's 2,475 square feet or less floor area. And there's a diagram there showing the uh, proposed outline of uh, what the new, the new uh, building would look like. And the report under section 5.7 of the zoning bylaw, when planning board reviews a restricted use, it has to consider the following general criteria as applicable. A, conformity with all requirements of this bylaw. The zoning bylaw staff comment. This application requires restricted use approval in the agricultural zone in order to conform to this bylaw. The current zoning agricultural A does not change. One of the proposals of the restricted use designation is to accommodate uses where rezoning would result in undesirable uses due to uh, the as of right of that zone. A small retail store is permitted in other zones. If the property were to be rezoned to one of these zones, i.e. commercial, just to accommodate small retail store, it would result in other undesirable land uses in the area. The specific use of a small retail store can be achieved by designating a portion of the property as restricted use, allowing only the small retail store use. B, conformity with the official plan. Staff comment, the restricted use conforms with, to the official plan as the land use will remain as agricultural. Should the small retail store cease to operate for 12 months, the restricted use lapses and the zoning remains as agricultural A and can be utilized as such. The restricted use is property specific. A change in property ownership would not require an approval. C, suitability of the site for proposed development. Staff comment, the site has been utilized as a farm gate outlet for many years. The existing building no longer meets the needs as the business has grown. The proposed building can be serviced for this development. The proposed small retail store will occupy a portion of the proposed 2,500 square feet farm gate outlet. And again, the diagram is, is there showing that and like what portion would be used, the front portion there would be, uh, would be used for the farm outlet. D, compatibility of the proposed development with surrounding land uses, including both existing and projected uses. Staff comment, the existing land uses surrounding the property is agricultural and single family residential R1 to the south. The property to the east is within the community of Sherbrook. The future land use for the subject property is agricultural. The site has been utilized as a farm gate outlet for many years, as a farm gate outlet is permitted in the agricultural zone as of right. The restricted use for a small retail store would be compatible with the farm gate outlet and would have minimal impact on the surrounding properties. And again, the diagram there showing the, the surrounding properties. E, any comments from residents or other interested persons? A public meeting was held on September 13, 2021. The public meeting notice was advertised in the August 30th edition of The Guardian. 19 letters were mailed to 12 city property owners. Matthew Compton spoke, providing an overview of the proposed intent for the restricted use. Staff comment, the applicant provided an explanation of his request for a restricted use, small retail store. There are no concerns raised by the public at the public meeting and no member of the public spoke at the public meeting. 
F, adequacy of the existing water, sewer, road, storm water, and electrical service, the city parking parkland for accommodating the development and any projected infrastructure requirements. Staff comment, the city's water supply and sewer treatment system can handle the loading created by the restricted use small retail store. Vehicle access will be via the all-weather highway. Storm drainage is an existing ditch system, uh, which is provincial jurisdiction. 268 all-weather highway has existing one-phase electrical service, three-phase electrical service is available on all-weather highway to service the area. Any electrical infrastructure relocation service upgrades and our additional service requirements for the retail store are at the cost of the owner. On site parking will be available for the proposed farm gate outlet. Parkland dedication is not required for a restricted use application. G, impacts from the development on pedestrian vehicle access and safety and on public safety generally. Staff comment, the development will utilize the all-weather highway, existing provincial right-of-way shoulder for pedestrian access to service the accommodate and accommodate the development. Uh, the applicant has secured permission from the province for the proposed farm gate outlet. H, compatibility of development with environment and scenic and heritage resources. Staff comment, there are no compatibility issues regarding environment, scenic, or heritage resources. I, impact on city finances and budgets. Uh, staff comment, development does not impact city finances or budgets. J, other matters as specified in this bylaw. Uh, nothing there. K, uh, other matters as considered irrelevant. Staff comment, access and parking area may require paid services for this proposed development. Should the proposed farm gate outlet, small retail store, be required to have plumbing facilities, these services are to be connected to the water and sewer remains along all weather highway and will be billed as a separate commercial metered service. So the recommendation of uh, city staff support the application from Highcroft Farm Inc. to allow a small retail store as a restricted use within the proposed farm gate outlet building in the agricultural A zone. As per section 5.1 subsection D3 of the uh, zoning bylaw, the uh, planning board shall make a recommendation to council on this application before it is approved or denied. The planning board recommendation, whether carried or defeated, will be brought forward to council for a final decision. So the planning board recommendation, the application received from High Crop Farm Inc. to allow a small retail store within the proposed farm gate building as a restricted use for 268 All-Weather Highway, PID number 1081520 in the Agricultural A Zone, be recommended to be approved by Council. And we have asked for a mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Adams, second by Councillor Ramsey. And we will open the floor for questions. Councillor McDougal. Hi, I just have one. I fully support the project uh, and look forward to it. The only question I had is it says under other matters is considered relevant. Access and parking area may require paved services. I don't remember is at telling people that they needed to pave their service. Is that? Uh, again, our, our, uh, our bylaw states, I think uh, commercial developments are required paved surface to be, be uh, paved and uh, we have to review that further where this is going to be a seasonal operation, but that's what our wording says if a comment comes up. I guess I just haven't noticed it in other ones. I don't in other ones be it. all of our, like we had issue with a couple on Central Street that didn't want to pave their lot when they're putting in a commercial business yeah. year round. They wanted to actually just put something in and be gravel, dirt, you know? Yeah. And our bylaw states that it must be paved. Okay, so I just don't recall yeah. seeing that before, yeah. thanks. Do we, and I don't know if it's in, probably immaterial, what the remainder of the building is going to be used for? Just farm implements or? Cold storage. Cold storage. I think he stated the back was going to be storage to try and uh, extend their season or well, okay. our products, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I think it was some of it just cleaning the product as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so Any other questions? Councilor Stone. I'm, I'm just uh, tying on to what Councilor McDougal was saying. So we're looking at whether or not they may need to pave. Is that what we're saying? 
at this time, we just got a, a layout. We right. didn't get anything else as far as the site plan. We, we, we just got the building size and for the restricted use. We haven't seen the rest of their stuff that they plan on coming in with. Maybe they plan to. Maybe it's going to be gravel at least, or you know. Okay. I, I'm just. I, I and I understand why we have that in say other businesses within the community. Yeah. But just and, and they might not need to. But I just want to yeah. say because it's sort of a firm type venture. Um, yeah. I would hope um, it sort of fits. It sort of fits with. Yeah. It sort of yeah. fits with the uh, yeah. idea. Of it I, guess, I guess the challenge. Business. It's it's in there because like I say, if you have residents beside us. Yeah. And there's lots of traffic coming and going in there. The dust of this is going right. to be blowing on them all next time. That's why it was to be hard right. surface. And I understand. I'm just yeah. sort of playing through my head. Well, where this was going to be a seasonal one, we're saying that's what it says in our, our rules until we actually see their okay. see their uh, what they're proposing. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. They, they may not want to do the maintenance of uh, potholes in the, in the yard. People, you know, exactly. or if they're going to have any product that's going to be coming out, that's whether it's going to be a, a cart or whether or not. You know. Cool. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Councillor Ramsey. <coughs> and this is more on planning board and not necessarily this topic, but um, we, um, and, and we're, gonna, we're going to adjourn and I won't have a chance to say this, so I just need to say it now. I'm wondering about um, when we're talking about advertising and it, Carrie, like you were concerned, Councillor Adams, about it not just going in the Guardian and people not getting the word. I wonder if we could do something like whatever ad we're putting in the Guardian, maybe get it to Lisa and have her run it through our page. And then that could be a way, another way of, you know, our city page. <coughs> and then that, because I don't really know how else we could do that. I think, um, um, we only have the Guardian. Yeah, well, and, and, yeah. And, and the letters going out. And I don't think the bylaw refers to social media at all, so. Would it, we? Probably the only requirement in the bylaw is probably the guardian, but maybe, maybe we need to take a look at that and extend. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just out. thinking. I'm just thinking. It, even if it came to us and yeah. we could share it, but a way of getting more yeah. information out to the residents, oh, I guess. It, that's you know, then, that's yeah. all I'm thinking. And we of. should be committed to doing that. Yeah. 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 Okay. I just wanted to bring that up while we had yeah. a minute. So. The, the, the planning act Thank actually you. outlines what notification is required. Our bylaw goes one step further to say notify all the neighbors within 200 meters. Yes. In the case of the Woodridge place, it's all one property. Yeah. So that's yeah. why not multiple people would have been notified in that case. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, guys, like I'm not, this is not anything that you guys are doing. I'm not, no. I'm just t for, for down the road, you know, for future times. I'm just thinking that's, that's no, I, you, you did your job for sure. Yeah, I'm I think there's sort of a general that. agreement that we really want to get these notifications to a broader base. So right, and how do we do that? So we need so to do that. Yeah, yeah. maybe involve it, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> and just yeah. one thing to consider, we also have folks that say, well, I don't have the internet, so I don't know when the meeting is. No, uh, uh, as well. Uh, just, just a way of trying another tool. Yeah. 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 Okay, not seeing any further lights we'll, uh, we'll we'll call the question so it's been moved by councillor Adams seconded by councillor Ramsey that the application received from Highcroft Farms Inc to allow a small retail store within the proposed farm gate building as a restricted use for six or 2680 Weather Highway PID number 1081520 in the agricultural A zone be recommended to be approved by council all those in favor say aye and planning board Contrary, the motion carried. And that'll be uh, that'll go to council on September twentieth for for consideration. And finally, the final thing on the agenda is a uh, four fifteen Water Street major variance. So we will proceed with that. And the supporting explanation, the purpose, the purpose of the major variance is to allow a lot area less than what is required in the R3 zone development standards. Background, the property owners, Trent Smith and Jennifer McKinney of 419 Water Street, PID number 301291, would like to extend their existing driveway to create vehicle access to their detached garage located in their rear yard. 
In order to do so, they must acquire a small parcel of land from the abutting neighbor, PID number 301317, to the east. A subdivision application was received from Trent Smith, acting on behalf of the property owner, Wise Han uh, Feng. To subdivide the portion of PID number 301317, uh, 415 Water Street, creating a 39.4 square meter parcel, uh, parcel A. Parcel A is to be consolidated to PID number 301291, 419 Water Street. Upon review of the subdivision application, staff determined a major variance of 13% for the lot area was required. And the map there, the diagram there, shows the the subject parcel A that's being uh, that's being considered. The report: the proposed lot area for the existing single-family home is 415.6 square meters. The city of Summerside zoning bylaw states a minimum lot area of 480 uh, square meters is required. In the uh, R3 zone, the applicant is requesting approval of a variance of 13% to the lot area. Justification for variance, as required by Section 7.2 of the City Zoning Bylaw SS 15 uh, 2007, Council Planning Board and Development Office also consider the variance against the following tests for justifying a variance. A that the hardship is due to unique physical conditions of the lot or property, including small lot size, irregular lot shape, existing building location on the property, or exceptional topographical conditions, which make it impractical to develop in strict conformity with bylaw standards. Exceptional topographical conditions may include, but are not limited to, trees, slope of the land, etc. Staff comment. Yes, this variance request would meet this test. The characteristics of the lot has impact on the requirement for the variance as the lot size is existing, not a newly created lot. B, that the proposed variance meets the general intent of the official plan. Staff comment. Yes, this variance request would meet this test. The existing lot land use is residential. C, that the proposed variance meets the general intent of the zone. Staff comment. Yes, this variance request would meet this test. The proposed extension of the driveway will not impact the required setbacks on the existing neighbors. The variance impacts the uh, property owners seeking the minor subdivision only. D, that the proposed variance would not impact neg negatively on adjacent properties or on essential character of the surrounding neighborhood, including taking into consideration any comments from neighbors. Staff comment, yes, the variance request would meet this test. 14 letters were delivered to 12 properties within 30 meters of the boundaries of the subject property. The property is bordered by neighbors to the west, east, and north boundaries and the street on the <coughs> south boundary. Oh, Comment from adjacent property owners were due on or before September 15th. The development officer received a phone call from Shelley Williams, 411 Water Street, requesting clarification on the variance being requested. The development officer provided an explanation and emailed Ms. Williams a copy of the proposed subdivision plan. No further comments were received. The city's zoning bylaw provides regulations for the uses of land and the location of buildings on a property. It is difficult for zoning bylaw provisions to take into account all circumstances such as pertaining to lot size, lot shape, pie-shaped lots, property line yard setbacks, and topographical conditions, which may impact the development of a particular property. The hardship for a variance cannot be an economic one, but must be technical in nature. The size and shape of the property or the design of a building uh, or project may prevent the owner from fully meeting all of the provisions of the zoning bylaw. In such cases, a variance is a mechanism which is used to provide some degree of flexibility and discretion in applying the strict provisions of the bylaw. As a general principle, a variance must maintain the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. It should never be used as a mechanism to circumvent or frustrate the intent of the bylaw. For example, variance cannot be used to create a land use or, a fully, or fully eliminate a required yard setback. Any person who is dissatisfied by a decision of council or the development officer may, under the zoning bylaw, 
uh, appeal to the Island Regulatory and Appeals Commission within 21 days of the decision in accordance with the Planning Act. Staff review. Staff support the lot area variance of 13% uh, to allow a minor subdivision which would allow the proposed extension of the driveway for the proposed <coughs> property located at 419 Water Street. As per section 5.10 uh, subsection B3 of the zoning bylaw, the planning board shall make a recommendation to council on this application before it's approved or denied. The planning board recommendation, whether carried or defeated, will be brought forward for council for a final decision. So the planning board recommendation, the application from Trent Smith acting on behalf of the property owner, Wai Zhang Feng, for a lot area variance of 13% for PID number 301317 be recommended to be approved by council. And can I have a mover and a seconder for that? Moved by Councillor Ramsey. Second by Councillor Adams. Okay. Any questions? Just, uh, or, uh, just, your uh, Worship. Thank you. Uh, I'm just, I know it's, the print is very fine here in my paper, and unless it was on the screen and I missed it. What, is that 415 uh, Water Street East or West? Where, what is that location? Oh, that's the corner of Dr. Carmody. Yeah. Dr. Carmody's place. Where is it, where's that? On West. Oh, on West? Yeah. yeah well, okay, uh, okay, I can see now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns? So the application is is it signed by the present owner or the the owner that wants to subdivide the land designated the neighbor who wants the piece of land to, to act on their behalf. Okay, and we have that designation for, that, that, that's a formal designation. Yeah, that's yeah. something okay. that we obtained. Yeah, okay. great. Thank you. Oh, I know Trent. I know Trent well, but I just I, I just wondered about that. Yeah. Yeah. Any other uh, comments or questions? I just one, and I don't know the topic. Yeah, take your just going there. back to that other thing. Take it to the right there. Yeah. Just to that point. Uh, so it's the neighbor that has been designated to ask for the variance by the property owner. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be improper, but I'm just wondering, is there some specific reason why that it would be the owner not asking? Perhaps when the gentleman, the, when the Mr. Smith approached him, he just said, if you want to look after it, great. I don't want to manage it or so what have you. It's not, as as we, it's not uncommon. Okay. As long as we have the designation formalized, there's no issue with that. So. Okay, no other lights on, so we will call the question. All those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Contrary? Motion carried. And with that, that concludes. Uh, Does that finish it up, uh, Councillor? It doesn't have to go to Council. This is, that's all required. Or it will be coming to Council when? 20th. Yeah, on the 20th. Okay. Still goes to 20th. Thank you. Yeah. Is that everything on the agenda? That is it, Your Worship. Okay, we uh, somebody adjourn the meeting before we get on hook from you two. Moved by Councillor Adams and seconded by Councillor Ramsey. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Meeting adjourned.